and joking too Sipping and roasting is what we do Light them up, drink them down Whiskey and cigars all around Cheers, y'all. Ian, our intro music's not playing, but we are actually live. I'm not entirely sure what to do about that. Well, I suppose that uh, I will unaccompanied say, Well, 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 well. And welcome, my friends, to uh, the show, Smoking and Toasting, uh, number 140, what, 143 today. Yeah, something like that. Pretty exciting, yeah. That's crazy. Uh, it took us 100. Or do we have a sesquicentennial thing going on? That's uh, 150, right? Yeah, we, we hadn't really planned anything specific for that show. I thought we'd wait till we got to 200 before we did another big blowout. So for 150, everybody. we're just going to come in here and, and talk and drink. I, I think, yeah, I think maybe we'll have... Um, some drinks, some beers, some spirits, and who knows, maybe even some cigars on that show. And maybe talk about something. And maybe talk about something. Sounds like a good idea. Welcome to, to the program. Today is uh, show number 143. As I said, we were brought to you by B&B Butchers and Restaurant. Oh, it's weird without the music starting the show, isn't it? <laughs> it's uh, a little it's strange. Got, it's it's got strange. me a little thrown off. Uh, we're brought to you by B&B Butchers. Dun, 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 dun. I actually, feel, <laughs> I actually feel better now, to be honest with you. Uh, we're brought to you by B&B Butchers and Restaurant at 1814 Washington Ave in Houston. And in the shops at Clear Fork in Fort Worth, uh, BB Italia on Memorial in Houston and BB Lemon on Washington Ave. And a brand new location uh, coming soon. So uh, very excited to have uh, those guys as our sponsors. want to uh, say a quick special uh, thanks to our special guest, uh, last week, Backfish Brewing, we had uh, on the show. We had Mr. And Caleb Wilson on. He Caleb was a lot was of fun. Caleb was the man, yeah. And, you know, it was amazing because he came on. He'd only been working there for, what did he say, a month? Mm-hmm. And he'd only been working there for a month. He's uh, pretty knowledgeable. And they threw him to the dogs. They threw him they right go, yeah, you go, just you go, you go do the show. <laughs> They're like, I've seen that show. We're not going on. Yeah, but, but you know what he did? He put the new guy on. Being the wise man that he is. He brought really good beers. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was that was really, actually quite. Really I'm actually having one of their uh, one of their beers today for. Show <coughs> well, that's beer. your show beer. We we it's call it a show beer gravity. when it's not necessarily one of the ones that we're you know sampling, uh, but we you know may have one just to get we're just started. wetting the whistle during the wetting show. The whistle. What are you I having like over that. there? It looks like uh, a Sam I'm Adams. having a Sam Adams Boston Lager supporting uh, you know one of the original. Craft you know what's breweries. wrong with that? What? Absolutely not nothing. A darn. Thing. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, yeah. You got that right. I enjoy. Uh, the Sam Adams Boston Lager. I really do. So on today's show, uh, it's a trend. We've talked about it, and it's a pretty exciting one, I think. This whole trend towards lighter craft beers. Mm-hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. I love me some non-light craft beer. It's not going to stop me from drinking barley wine. Yeah, but there does come a time when you're looking for something a little bit lighter. It's summertime, it's warm, and you think, man, if I'm going to have a few... I really could stand and not take in all those calories and also have maybe <laughs> something a little more uh, sessionable or crushable, as the kids say. And so, by that, we mean a little less alcohol content. Yeah, a little so, less alcohol you know. content, a little lower calories, uh, and and something that maybe it's easier to drink for the entirety of an afternoon if you're out in the park or yeah, floating the on the river or, like yeah, I exactly, like to do. Or exactly. So Hanging out by the uh, pool. So not only will we be talking about that, because there's all kinds of articles and stuff cropping up about uh, those things, but we'll also be... Um, uh, we'll be tasting one of those, and um, I'm really interested to see how you react to this one. Uh, one of our beers today is from Spindle Tap Brewery, right uh, here in our hometown of Houston, Texas. We've had them on the show. They have a new beer out called Five Percent Tent. I love that name, by the way. Yeah, it's Five Percent Tent. It's a five percent ABV hazy. IPA. Nice. And that was something I wasn't sure you could even do. So it, it'll be interesting to check that. Just like, just like if you were to say to me, "Yeah, I've got a five and a half percent barley wine," I'd be like, "No, no you that, don't. Uh, no, yeah, you that, don't. <laughs> that's not a barley wine." <laughs> yeah, so uh, I love the name though, five percent tint, simply because, yeah. like, if if you're in Texas or in, <laughs> in, in in many southern states, if you're in, you don't buy a car without tint on the window. That's right. Like, you would be a very sad person. I know, like up north in Pennsylvania, places like that, you're not allowed to have. 
uh, much tint at all if you if if any. Well, that's correct. I moved from Texas to California when I was in my twenties, and I got stopped because I had too much tint right, on my right, windows. Yeah, the- I was like, "You don't understand, sir." <laughs> right. I came from Texas. If you don't have it there, you die. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, you just open your car uh, and die immediately. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, um, yes, five percent tint is uh, one of the things we'll be sampling. We'll also be sampling uh, West Bo- Westbrook Brewings. Black raspberry. It's an oak aged sour ale with black raspberries. Now, I know we have some in, in our comments, we have some people that are not big fans of the sours, but we don't, and we don't taste the sours too often on the show, but it's been a while, and I thought we should. And so, uh, I, this I one actually is, drink sour beers. I know regularly. you like sour, I like and sour I do too. I, I, I enjoy the I just had a victory sour. Uh, uh, sour ale that was fantastic. <coughs> really? Yeah. What, was it ju- just a sour, or was it a particular uh, it was a berry? a Belgian sour, mm. and I'm trying to remember what the name of it was. I'll, I'll make come up with it by the end of this. I still miss, you know, St. Arnold uh, had the, uh, the sour that I love that you could get in the bomber, and they basically... Transformed it into the raspberry. Oh yeah, they're Berliner Weiss. Berliner Weiss, thank you. Yes, uh, it, and I love the raspberry. It was AF, called but Boiler Room. Sometimes I just miss the Boiler Room. That right, was, it was called Boiler Room, and it was cheap too. You'd buy a bomber yeah. of it for like five bucks. Yeah, four ninety nine. I think it was delicious. Yeah. I used to get that all the time. And then they love changed it. it to the Raspberry AF, which is, by the way, delicious. Yes, and it, I I really enjoy it. But it, sometimes I w- wish I could just have the Berliner Weiss. Anyway, uh, Rhinelander Brewing Company from uh, Monroe, Wisconsin, has a chocolate stout. That Alan Denny left at my house, and we're going to be <laughs> Alan <laughs> nice. Denny. Alan Denny, his wife came over for for uh, dinner recently. Awesome, and he brought some beers, and he brought this particular chocolate stout. He brought a couple of cans of it um, because he said that it is he, you can buy it locally, and it's really inexpensive. I want to say, and Alan Denny. Who nobody cares about. Uh, he may have to jump in and correct me here on the chat if he's if he's listening or watching. But I think he said that a six pack of these was like four ninety nine oh. for a stout. Oh. I'm like, no way, no way. So oh. so we'll see. Usually it's a four pack for you know uh, twelve ninety nine or something for for a stout, right? So so it'll be interesting to see. We did not taste it that night. I had a. Uh, uh, a Lagunitas uh, Imperial Stout uh, in a bomber in the fridge, and we went with that oh, instead. Oh, nice, nice. So, and, uh, and I think a Rogue. Oh, I had a Rogue ch- a Rogue uh, Chocolate Stout in oh, the bomber. Absolutely. So we drank those two and never got to this. So so we're going to taste that on here, thanks and courtesy to uh, uh, Alan Denny, who nobody cares about. By the way, he uh, when he got to my building, you know, my building has concierge, so mm-hmm. they call up if you have a visitor, right? And he was going to say to the guy, Tell him it's a guy that nobody cares about, <laughs> but he said the guy the guy was having too much trouble understanding him, and he oh, decided was, it would be decided it would be too. It was uh, a breakdown in communication. Yes, it was, and and that happens sometimes with the weekend concierge. Uh, so anyway, that's that's going to be, and then you may have seen on Mister Twirly Gig when the show opened and we had our uh, music fail um, that we have a uh, Japanese whiskey to taste today. Uh, so very excited about that too. Mm-hmm. So how's your week been, man? Man, it's been good. Uh, yeah. I've been out riding my mountain bike a lot. That's makes me. You know, quite happy and sore yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So I went out uh, last weekend to the uh, downhill lift park again. How long have you been riding mountain bikes? Is that something you did as a kid and just kept doing? Well, I had BMX bikes when I was little, yeah. and then um, and then I got into road cycling, and then and then I took a break about ten years ago and just yeah. didn't ride much at all. Because you've gotten back in the last into year, this I'm way last into year it again. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, so I still have a lot of skills, but I don't have a lot of lungs and legs to back it up. So <laughs> I'm working you. on that I right now. You. Where do you go uh, when you when you ride? Do you go out to so, a place that's good well, to ride so, mountain bikes? So or? here in Houston, and most most towns will have uh, trails designated. Mm-hmm. Like there's trails. There's a big park in Houston called Memorial Park. There's uh, there's outlying trails out in. Um, Cypress area. I go to Cypress Creek a lot because it's on my way back and forth from work. So I'll mm-hmm. just bring my stop bike to off, work, and stop there, out. and yep. go. You know, beat myself up on the trails and um, and there's a lot of places out there. But I like to go out to Austin. I have a, a friend out in Austin lives out there. He goes mountain bike uh, mountain biking with me. So we go out to the trails. They're a little different. There's actually some elevation change out there which we don't have here right those of you in the mountains would not call them mountains but they are hills <laughs> they're hills <laughs> they yes. are hills foothills and then uh they put up uh north of austin about an hour outside of austin is a place called spider mountain where they put a lift park out which there. really is spider hill but yes 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 <laughs> and so what it is is you you and your bicycle get on the ski lift at the bottom it's just and then an you actual ski lift down. and you 
they take you to the top, and then you take one of the trails down, and they awesome. it's, it's set up just like skiing. So you have the green trail, the blue trails, and then you have oh, the uh, the black diamond trails, double black diamond, those kind of things, and and you got to go with your skill level on there, uh, and it's so fun. It's, well, it's uh, just you know, it's like it's like you get to you get to do all that downhill without having to spend well, all your energy going uphill. Yeah, that's good. It's good to know. Which that's is a my, little that's less my good, kind of yeah. That's, it's good. I don't live too close to there because I need the fitness of going uphill. Yes, of but. going uphill. I get it. <laughs> so in between all the mountain biking and other things, do you have an opportunity to smoke anything I, interesting I this week? I smoked a cigar that just came in uh, to Casa de Monte Cristo yesterday. Actually, I walked in today. Well, you are like right on the cutting edge with the new cigars there. Well, yeah, I try what I yeah. Can. So like one it. of the I just like I, I like going in there um, in the mornings because it's close to here and I get to sit down and just chill and try something new, and those guys are always so nice to me too. So uh, so but they have this this one aisle like you walk in the humidor and it's the very first aisle you run into is the newest stuff out. So I saw the uh, all the Opus X are out and everything now. Right. By the way, and they look delicious. Well, there's going to be a lot of new cigars hitting stores mm-hmm. because IPCPR is almost right. Turning. There's right. always a lot of new releases. Right, right. The IPCPR. So, uh, so the uh, Arturo Fuente Don Carlos Personal Reserve, the man's 80th. Oh my. That's a lot of name, right? Yeah, and and I I bet it was not a three dollar cigar. They charge by the letter. Yeah, <laughs> that's why the name's so long. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> Fifty cents per letter or something like that. Um, so I yeah I, I looked at all this. I've had Opus X before, so I didn't bother with that. I have not had this before, and uh, the newest iteration of it, the Man's 80th, um, has a medium brown appearance, very smooth, medium firmness, uh, firmness to it, super classy bands on it. Uh, you can probably see in a picture. I forgot to take a picture before I lit this, by the way, so that's why the first picture you see first is picture's lit. already yeah. lit. Got it, yeah. Which brings me right into the it's pre-light beautiful. sniff. Rich soil, nutty, soft spice, and toast is what I was smelling on that yeah. thing. Um, the pre-light draw uh, used a punch. It was effortless. Had a lot of earth, fermented hay, and barnyard kind of uh, right off the bat and some leather, which is interesting because most of those things didn't come back. Mm. Like That's what I smelled and, and tasted on a cigar before I lit it. Once I lit it, the initial light was crazy interesting. So the initial light was, was leather. Okay, mm-hmm. with a little white pepper, light spice, a little toast, um, and it was the very first puff was pretty big, and then by the third puff, that cigar had settled into its flavor. Interesting. I mean, it was so quick that I just was blown away by it, and I was waiting for it to continue changing. Well, it did slowly. Um, the first third of this cigar was toasty toast. That's what I wrote down. I like toasty, toasty toast. toast. Toasty toast Earth, is delicious. Um. Oh, I lost my place. Here we go. Toasty toast, earth, hay, a little underlying sweet, like a maltiness almost going on in there. That's a beautiful cigar. I'm just looking at the picture. Yeah, wow. I mean it's gorgeous. It's yeah. gorgeous, and it was a it was a five and a five and a quarter by fifty. I think it was mm-hmm. the was the size. Um, the burn on this was perfect. Solid ash. Didn't have any trouble with that. I actually only ashed the cigar three times. Wow. Like, yeah, that's how solid the ash was, and it looked great the whole time. The second third of this, uh, a lot of toasts. The, the malty sweetness kind of came a little more towards the front. The earth and spice kind of blend into these dense flavors that are really, really interesting. Uh, and it had an underlying pepper through there, just a little bit, you know, just enough to make it interesting and go, there's, there, it's still there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's, there was a cedar, like, towards the end of that... <gasps> Uh, second, third, the cedar flavor started sneaking in a little bit that I hadn't picked up on before. Right. So I don't know if that was part of the cigar, you know, building up and strength a little bit. The whole time it was about a medium strength. This is not a real powerhouse or anything, but great complexity. Fuentes are you're usually not like right. huge, right. right? Yeah, right. You don't think of Fuente as like it's not like a. You think of them as re- yeah, very good, no, mild, medium, to and medium. mild. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. So the last third of this toast, uh, nutty sweetness and malt right up front. Cedar notes were bigger. Spice and earth and underlying pepper were there. All those things moved a little bit towards the back, but that sweetness moved way up front in the last bit of this. I, I smoked a cigar way down um, until the end of it. It never got harsh. It never got um, anything less than delicious. This was a $15 cigar. Right. Um, it was worth every penny of $15. Oh, I love hearing that. Every single penny of that fifteen dollars, uh, I'm going to give it uh, a five and a half to a six. And the reason I'm going to do that is not because uh, you know I would have wanted to pay more for it, but because the experience was so good. So you're like, saying that if it had been a sixteen, seventeen dollars cigar, same experience, 
you wouldn't have felt like you overpaid, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, so I, you know, right at a right at a five for what I paid, but I mean, I just enjoyed the experience so much. So maybe there's a, I just give it a plus for that. How's that? Five plus, or five maybe plus, yeah. maybe a six. I you know, I had it was a, so good. Like I just I just enjoyed it. When I first started smoking cigars, I had a, a buddy. I, I didn't know that many people at the time that that smoked cigars for real. I knew some of the people who'd picked it up during the boom and, you know, would have one if you were right, out and right, stuff. Right. But one of the first, like, real cigar buddies that I met, the guy that lives in uh, California, uh, but had lived for a while in the Boston area, and he loved the Arturo Fuente Don Carlos so much that he would go to the little uh, smoke shop that was down right off of Boston Common uh, and when he was in Boston and buy boxes of it and Multiple take them home yeah yeah like boxes. i'm talking five six boxes and wow. take them home with him wow. and and it's not an inexpensive cigar mm-hmm. so i mean he was laying out the catch but that's what he loved to smoke and i guess uh, close to where he lived in california he had trouble finding them uh so he would uh, he would you know stock up on them whenever he well was i will Boston. tell you this this is the perfect example of what a 15 cigar uh, 15 dollar cigar should be it yeah. is so good and so quality. The burn was perfect. The construction. I mean, there was nothing about this cigar Love it. that wasn't in that price range. You Love know. It. Well, I uh, I want to talk about a cigar today, and I want to just say that since you know it was, when we first started the show, we were audio only, uh, and then uh, you know a little ways in, we added uh, video. We started streaming the show live on Facebook as well as putting it up on uh, YouTube, so people mm-hmm. can watch it after. And of course, you can watch it on Facebook after if you see the post or whatever. Uh, and then as we went, we thought, well, there's got to be some more interesting visual things that we can show than just, you know, you and me sitting in front of a microphone that's right, for the that's whole right. show. So that's where ideas like Mr. Twirly Gig came from. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we started doing was when we would smoke the cigars that we were going to talk about on the show that week, you and I would both try to take photos as mm-hmm. we smoked and, and be able to put them up. So it just makes things a little more interesting. Makes the visual aspect of it. Hopefully we're still great audio, right. but you know. Right. Well, so the cigar I want to talk about uh, this week, first of all, um, Adam, who's our producer, Adam's my stepson, he came over to the house for dinner last week, and he brought me a cigar that he bought for me when he was in Washington, D.C. at Georgetown Tobacco. And uh, like a lot of shops, Georgetown Tobacco has some of their own house brand cigars that'll be made by you know different cigar makers and uh, you know they do that at Stogies they do that in a number of different places uh, and this is one that Rocky Patel made exclusively for Georgetown Tobacco so we smoked after dinner and I had the cigar but I wasn't thinking that I would choose it to talk about the show when we lit it. we were just you know we had dinner we were having drinks uh, I was like oh I'll smoke this this looks great um, so anyway I didn't take pictures. Uh, but then it was a really interesting cigar. So I decided <laughs> I really did want to talk about it on the show, but now I had no photos, right? <laughs> so since I don't have pictures of of the cigar, I've uh, brought along some pictures to take the place of what I would normally be showing you while I you know, talk about oh, the cigar. Oh, I can't wait to see this. So the first one, this is a picture of the cigar band. At least I, at least I saved that. It's the Caucus, Rocky Patel Caucus, which makes sense for a place that's, and that's my you know, stubby fingers holding the Caucus band because it's no longer on the Is that like a, a row of buildings there? Yeah, in the- it's like a row of buildings like uh, uh, D.C. row houses mm-hmm. or Georgetown uh, townhomes, uh, brownstones, whatever. And, and that makes sense because uh, it's a cigar that, was done specifically for a shop in D.C. So mm-hmm. caucus, you know, that's mm-hmm. a yeah. political word, so it makes sense. So so a uh, picture of the cigar band, I, at least I saved that. This is a, a picture of a dog flying a plane. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, again, I would prefer to be showing you, you know, maybe like the first bit of is the this burn. A, is this alluding no, to what it felt like to uh, – to, 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 Light the cigar, like uh, you. You could read that in if you want, or it could be just completely <laughs> random. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. It could just um, be a dog flying a plane. Here's one of a really cheesy Avengers toy knockoff, the Incredible <laughs> Fella, <laughs> the Revenge from the Revengers. <laughs> you talk about being too cheap to pay the licensing. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Hey, Tommy, I couldn't find that Incredible Hulk that you wanted, but here's the Incredible Fella. It looks like they went somewhere looks between like the Hulk him. and the Rock on the yeah, face. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, here's a, a photo of some guys trying to pull a steer out of a public fountain. Oh, yeah. That's I, pretty I interesting. I see that right? happening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, here's a box of Spider-Man tissues where it looks like the <laughs> tissues 
<laughs> are coming out of Spidey's butt. <laughs> that's pr- that's a classic Spider-Man pose, and it yep, definitely yep. looks like the tissues yeah. are coming out of Spidey's uh, butt. Someone didn't follow through on the design idea completely before the- they. They could have just rotated that yeah, picture yeah. forty-five degrees and fixed that problem. Yeah, they totally could. <laughs> and uh, finally, here's a group of Ronald McDonald's dancing outside a KFC. I guess just trying to piss the chicken guy off. I don't know. Like like I have no idea why that would happen. Uh, but there you go. I don't know what to say about that. That's the funniest one yet. Visually, I just wanted to make the show a little more interesting. And since <laughs> I hadn't done what I was supposed to do and uh, and taken photos of the cigar, I thought, well, I'll uh, substitute them. But this, back to the cigar. This makes me think of that Liquorville uh, uh, skit yeah. that um, <laughs> Justin Timberlake yes, did. With, yes. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Uh, uh, so back to the cigar. It was a really nice looking stick. I'm sorry I can't show it to you. Uh, the pre light was creamy and it smelled of really rich tobacco, which uh, you know think think your best Anchorman delivery there. Rich uh, mahogany. Uh, it was great from the first puff. It was nutty and earthy. Adam told me that it was Ecuadorian tobacco. I didn't. Uh, you know, normally I can tell you. I'll, I'll look this up. You can't find the cigar anywhere on the internet. I did look to see huh. if I could find details on it. Or, or maybe buy some more. You can't. Uh, anyway, um, Adam mentioned that it was Ecuadorian tobacco, and I, it was a really nice change of pace. I've been smoking mostly Nicaraguans yeah, lately, yeah. and this was just such a nice change up. Like the way the flavors came together was different, but still, still really, really good. Uh, the flavor of it actually reminded me a lot of the Aladino cigars that we had oh, okay, when we were yeah. in Honduras. It was that kind of a flavor. That kind of earthiness flavor to it, yeah. Yes, yeah. very earthy, very rich, and very yeah, complex. Yeah. Uh, construction was perfect. Honestly, it was one of the best Rockies I've had in a while. I, I loved the cigar. I would love to be able to get more of them. It might even tempt me to go back to D.C. at some point, which I think I swore I'd never do. Uh, but <laughs> but perhaps perhaps I should. Had to be a good cigar. Um, I think, Adam, may correct me, I think it was about a 7 or $8 stick. Um, if you're in the D.C. area, it is worth a trip to Georgetown Tobacco and look for the Rocky Patel Caucus. I'm telling you, it's a great cigar, and you're not going to find it anywhere else. So nice. go and buy it. If you want to buy a couple extra, I'll buy them from you. You know, just, just <laughs> let me know. Uh, price to quality. I'm I'm going to give it a seven. I loved this cigar. Wow. It, it was just uh, for a seven to eight dollar stick. I thought it just performed absolutely wonderfully. So I was I was very very pleased and and you know it's it, it's funny. I, I'm imagining Adam in the store thinking, okay, I'm going to get him a cigar. What can I get him? And I, he just couldn't have done better. Like it was the perfect nice. thing because I wouldn't have been able to get it you know here or through mail order or anything. And so I got that experience that and maybe that factors into the. High rating a little bit, you know, the fact that it was kind of exclusive. But well, but again, cigars are about the experience. That is. It's all about the experience. And it made for a great experience. So You I know, um, uh, it, it occurs to me, too, like, does anyone out there not like Rocky Patel cigars? You I know. Mean, they're so good. I, I have heard like a few the people. quality is so I've heard good. a few people criticize Rocky, um, you know, not sort of like officially, but just sort of unofficially. But I think it's just more about because he's such a big figure and he's yeah. such a and by, by the way, I, I love him. I think he's awesome. I love what he's doing to fight mm-hmm. for cigar rights in Washington, D.C. And you got to figure he's been to Georgetown Tobacco a lot because he's always in Washington lobbying right, for right. Uh, cigar smokers and cigar makers' rights. So, um, so Rocky, you you go, man. We've had Rocky on this show. Yeah. He was a wonderful gentleman. Loved to talk in tobacco, and you got to know, you know, he sees you and me. He's like, oh great, I got to talk to these guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? But but he just couldn't have been nicer, more professional, and more engaging. So yeah, uh, he so was awesome. I think he's awesome. So price quality seven. If you find yourself in Washington D.C., make your way over to the Georgetown neighborhood and go to George. Georgetown Tobacco and get some. That and, sounds and, awesome. And bring me one if you're from the a local area where I live, because I would, I'll gladly pay you for it or or trade you something interesting from out of uh, my humidor. So, all right, uh, Ian, let's take a break. We have uh, a number of interesting things to do today. We talked about uh, the best light craft beers. Also, we're going to talk great whiskeys for Father's Day. If you need to uh, find a good uh, whiskey to give someone for Father's Day. First of all, hopefully they're a father, uh, but uh, but secondly, even if they're not, we'll find some that you know that you can appreciate, that they will appreciate, and that and you if know, they're just finding out that they're a father for for good or worse, that's a good. Then you good may thing. need to go with one of the more expensive bottles. <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, so we'll get to that as well, and we'll be right back. I don't think we have music. Do we have music bumper out, or it's still well, I'll try it, but... it's still missing? All right, I tried. If it doesn't work, Ian, you may have to uh, sing us out to the break. Yeah, no, it's not. There's nothing. I'm gonna sing us out. Let's see. Um, Near 
far, wherever you are. We'll be right back. It's smoking and toasting. Okay, that was a great choice. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome back. It's smoking and toasting. Not that I didn't appreciate your awesome sing out at the end of the uh, first segment. And could you have chosen, uh, you know, a more random song than <laughs> the Titanic song? Uh, but uh, but it was lovely. Uh, and not that I didn't appreciate that, but. Uh, during the break, uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Caitlin, who works here at the uh, RFC and Sweet Radio mm-hmm. uh, Studios. Caitlin came in and corrected the problem that was keeping us from, uh, was from awesome. being able. Yeah, so uh, so Johnny, if you're watching, uh, no need for you to come back in. Caitlin's got it covered. She'll take your job from here on out. She's, <laughs> That's uh, right. she's, she's got it working. So, uh, so welcome back. By the He's way, he's been relegated to mailboy. It's <laughs> it's as long as he gets to sample some of the uh, barley wines right. and stouts, I think he'll be all right with it. Uh, welcome back to show number one hundred and forty three. This is smoking and toasting. We're all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars. And we are brought to you by B and B Butchers and Restaurant at eighteen fourteen Bacon's Good Washington Ave in Houston. Uh, in the shops at Clear Fork in Fort Worth, and uh, by BB Italia on Memorial in Houston, uh, a new place that is, uh, I understand, pretty awesome. We haven't been there yet, but we will get there soon. Uh, talking about the best uh, light craft beers today on the show, and we're going to be sampling one in a few moments. And I just wanted to mention, Ian, we don't always talk about the guests that we have coming up on the show, but I'm really excited about this one. Um, we have had some people suggest that we should do a wine show. Mm-hmm. And um, one of the reasons I, I think you were plenty whiny. Well, you were <laughs> whiny you, enough, sir. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, wine and you like <laughs> a little cheese with that wine. Um, <laughs> one of the reasons we haven't done it is because I really about the sum total of my knowledge in wine is I know the ones that I've had that I liked. That's that's about it. Like I'm really not. I really don't feel like I can speak that authoritatively about it. And um, so I thought, well, let's get somebody on who can. I tried getting my buddy Warren Christensen, uh, who works with uh, Q Prime uh, Artist Management, who's one of the most knowledgeable wine guys I know. Tried to get him on when we were out in California. Right, I remember you talking just, about just that. Just couldn't schedule couldn't get it. The schedule, yeah, yeah. Couldn't schedule it. But I'm proud to announce that coming up next month, Mark Burrell is going to join us on the show. And Mark may be one of the smartest wine guys in Houston. And that's saying a lot because there's a lot of restaurants, a lot of sommeliers mm-hmm. here. Uh, he is the owner of um, the Raven Grill here in oh, Houston, nice. which is a great restaurant, great food. And he's just super knowledgeable about wines. So I've asked him to to pick some and bring them in and you know show us what wine's supposed to be about. And we have somebody we can actually ask some semi-intelligent questions about wine. So that's going to be coming up in about uh, three or four weeks. Once we get back from the 4th of July holiday, that's pretty he'll awesome. be joining us. So, yeah, I'm so excited about that. But on today's show, talking a little bit about uh, the best light beers. And not only uh, are there, um, you know, there's, there's a couple of articles that I'm uh, going to go to to, you know, show some examples of some of the best light craft beers. I'm not going to start with it, but maybe in the next segment we'll get to this. One of them's from Popular Mechanics. Because <laughs> when I want to know about beer... That's right. I, my dad subscribed to Popular Mechanics yeah. when I was a kid. <laughs> I would pick them up and I would look at them and go, this is the most boring magazine I've ever seen in my life. But apparently they've hipped it up because they're talking, uh, <laughs> talking they're, about uh, beers. They're talking about craft beer. So maybe I should, uh, it seems I should like think popular, about subscribing. It seems like the, the underlying idea of popular mechanics and beer would be a bad mix. Yeah, you, you're absolutely <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm going to go work on the motorcycle. and, yeah. uh, and This uh, motorcycle has some, a Corvette yeah, engine in it. Have some craft and some beer, beer while I'm at it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so we've talked about the fact that there's a lot of uh, – a lot of the craft breweries are now really working to find something that they can release that is lower ABV, mm-hmm. lower calories, and uh, better for, uh, you know, se- there was a whole movement towards sessionable craft beers, particularly sessionable yeah. IPAs, a year or two ago. But now it's taken on a whole nother level as they're coming out with some really interesting things. And so looking at uh, some of the lists that I've found of these um, on uh, on the Internet, uh, I've got some uh, I've got some some examples for you and you guys who are listening to the show can go out and search these out and we'll tell you w- what we know uh you know the uh, brand the kona kana kona kanaha it's it's the 
it's the craft beer that always has the Hawaiian motif yes. on it. Okay, so they've got a uh, Kona Kanaha Blonde Ale. It's 4.2% ABV and 99 calories. They rank it fifth in flavor. I won't go into the whole ranking thing. And uh, third, uh, tied for third in refreshment. The uh, brewery is founded on the big island of Hawaii. They use surfers and waterfalls on the label. Mm-hmm. It'll be easy to find in your They have a uh, uh, coffee ale that uh, sells yep. really well. Yep. They said uh, it has an effervescence, tropical fruit on the nose, but not so much in the taste. Very fizzy and crisp, but it, but very, very refreshing because it's so uh, effervescent is what they say about it uh, in this article. Then there's the Boulevard. The Boulevard of Green mm-hmm. Brewery, Easy Sport Ale. It's 4.1% Haven't ABV. Haven't seen that one. Uh, 99 calories. Uh, they say it's the drinking man's alternative to Gatorade. That's how they describe it in the, <laughs> in the article. Uh, it's brewed with electrolytes, sea salt, potassium, and magnesium, and has more electrolytes and tangerine peel added at the end Should I put that in my water bottles when I'm biking? Yeah, yeah. Think it's got, about electroly- it. could, it's got totally electrolytes. Yeah. Uh, they say it has a lot of, uh, of citrus. Uh, doesn't have a strong taste. Not you know. Uh, uh, it, it seems like a beer that could have appeals. What they said, appeal that uh, appeal. Uh, then and we have talked about this beer, but we uh, we haven't sampled it unless you've sampled it uh, at a time when I wasn't along. But Dogfish Head now has the slightly mighty Locale IPA. Haven't tried that. I'm really anxious to try this. It's four percent ABV, ninety five calories, and um, the reviews that it got from the little reviewing panel that they put together for this article said it really good. Uh, not too watery, it says, but also feels like you could pound a few of these while getting sunburned and be okay. It's it's weird. Weird to think that you could pound a few of anything by Dogfish Head. I know. And I love their beers. Absolutely. But, but yeah, <laughs> you're usually thinking the 60 and the 90 and the 120, and you're not thinking of pounding. Uh, it says here that uh, it's uh, it's not too watery, uh, uh, not a lot of body, a body, but hops are what keep it from being a Miller Lightish beer. So uh, yeah, so yeah. you've got maybe the same sort of body as you know one of the more mainstream beers, uh-huh. but the hops give it a lot more flavor. So uh, very interesting. Uh, one reviewer said, I'd recommend this to someone who only drinks Keystone to get them to drink better beer. So, <laughs> I'd recommend a whole lot of things to someone who only drinks are, are, Keystone. Are you seeing Keystone is not like you know one of the craftier beers? I'm saying there's a difference between Keystone and, and stone. stone. <laughs> yeah, and and I think there's a whole lawsuit to prove that. Uh, Harpoon, one of my favorite breweries in the country, uh, out of great. Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, they have a beer called Rec League, uh, R-E-C period, like abbreviation for recreational uh, league. Some of these are just Rec brand league. new, right? They, yeah. they, in fact, most of these are like brand new. Brand that we're talking brand about. New. Yep. Uh, it is 3.8% ABV. Wow, that's really low. And 120 calories. They've actually got, I think, a picture of a soccer that's, ball. That's approaching, <laughs> that's approaching near beer. Uh, Harpoon IPA, uh, of course, was a staple in the early days of the craft beer movement. Harpoon IPA is what mm. got me into craft beer. That's what that's what pulled me that in. That was yep, the one. Absolutely. Uh, but it's not, uh, maybe Harpoon, not as well known uh, as it used to be, but they say that could be changing because the raves for Rec League are coming in really loud and strong. Uh, it is 120 calories, uh, the lowest ABV of anyone's in this particular article, and it is, uh, they say the differential adds the little pale ale to have a little more color and body than the other lighter beers. Good aroma for a light beer, kind of juicy, tastes like a low cal IPA, which is the point, right? Uh, so it's got to be an interesting balance because, you know, anything you add to a beer that's going to add more and more flavor is yep. going to add calories. Now, it said it'd be a good IPA for people who like to taste some hops in their IPA, but don't want a hop bomb. Right. So, yeah, so that makes sense, because you're not going to really get a hop mm-hmm. bomb in a lower calorie IPA. And finally, and we've talked a lot about this beer on this show, and we've said, I- I've called it the Bud Light Killer. Lagunitas Daytime IPA. Awesome beer. It's just amazing. 4% ABV, 98 calories. It ranked first in flavor and first in refreshment on the panel that they assembled for uh, for this ar- uh, for this article. They were very clear, it says, in their preference for this Lagunitas Dry Hoppy IPA, naming it the most refreshing and best tasting of all the beers. Pretty crisp taste throughout. It's very light, but you can still taste that happiness. Uh, a detractor noted it had minimal hops, but they appear to be on the finish. That is true. Uh, other tasters noted citrus and 
banana-like flavors. I uh, think it would be really good for grilling and outdoor parties. And daytime may be, they said, the most drinkable of all of the ones that were in uh, that sample. So that's the first article. I've got some more from the boys at Popular Mechanics we'll share it later on. But I thought this would be a perfect time, Ian, for you to maybe pop the top on this bad boy because there's a new entry into the uh, lower ABV locale beers, and it's from Sp- Spindle Tap. Wow, that sounded good. Spindle Tap right here in Houston. And this is something that, like I said, I wasn't sure this could even exist. This is a low cal, low uh, ABV, hazy IPA. Did you just uh, pour beer on your knee? Yep, I just poured beer on my knee. All right. I'm going to pass this one over to Adam real quick while you're pouring. Apparently, I didn't tilt the glass enough, and it did that thing where it rolls right down to the end of the Ah, uh, right down vessel. to the end of the uh, Now it's the going cup. into my sock. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's good to have your sock be beer smelling. <laughs> there's certainly worse things your sock could smell I'm sure like. I'll survive it. Uh, actually, that's, that, yeah. there's only three of us today. So. Only three of us today. Uh, so this is, and you can see it this on- This smells awesome, You can see it on Mr. Twirly Gig. It is a, uh, a spindle tap, 5%. Tint. It's 5% alcohol by volume. There's not a whole lot of information on the can, but we've had the boys from Spindle Tap on the show before, and they brought some really good beer. They're from right here in our hometown of Houston, and so I thought this would be a great They're place to start. They're one of the start. very few uh, that make an yeah. ESB as well. That's right. That ESB and is the Honey ESBs. Hole ESB. Yeah, the Honey Hole ESB. It's very really good. delicious. So yeah. starting out, this smells like a glass of orange juice. Yeah, it's it's it, very, very citrusy, it's uh, got, sweet smelling. So it's got that, that aroma aroma that like the parish ghost in the machine and some of the other very orange juice-ish um, uh, IPA, uh, hazy IPAs you know what? have got. It's funny you say all that because the predominant flavor in here, wait for it, grapefruit. You're so right. It is grapefruit. grapefruit. And yep. In a great way. Mm-hmm. Like in a great dry way. It's not, uh, it's not bitter like grapefruit, but there's a little snap mm-hmm. to it. Um, this is delicious. Ian, this is immediately jumping into my top three. Yeah, this is delicious right if, here. This if, is a well-made beer right if, here. If if th- this is almost as good as juicy IPAs that I've had, and juicy right now, I'm kind of on a juicy IPA kick anyway. And this is almost as good as ones so, I've had that have that are way more calories. This than is the full package. First off, the um, the carbonation in here is right. It's a little higher carbonated, but it's not a lot. Um, the mouthfeel in this is fantastic. It's got a nice, um, yeah, it is, it nice, is perfectly balanced. Big, uh, mouthfeel to it. The flavor in here hits your tongue immediately with that, that crisp. There's a tiny little bit of malt, but I mean, mm-hmm. a crisp kind of, um, it's just roundness citrus. to it. And then citrus just follows the entire rest of the way and it finishes without a, without a bitter, Hop right. It doesn't have any of that bitter all. On, on the finish at all. Although the hops are present, it doesn't finish with that bitter hop. Well, uh, I think that's one of the reasons that I like juicy IPAs to begin with is because you can get a lot of hops without having that really pine coney finish. The I really like this the beer. citrus seems to me. I do too. This is this is easily a new favorite for me. And, and the more I just want to say, I take of it, the more I like. I just want to say, if you live in Texas, somewhere where Spindle Taps beers are available. Please go out and buy this because I want them to sell so much that they keep making it. I don't want this beer to go. No, away. this is this is really good. Like, I mean, I, it's, you know, it's it's just fantastic. I'm I'm blown away actually by. I it. actually, in general, I would I would buy this for the fact that it's uh, Spindle Top and I like uh, their beers in general. But I generally avoid buying new IPAs because they all just taste bitter, hoppy to me. This is why you have of. me as a friend but because I we've can had you we've to had a things. rash of a few of them. Like you yeah. talked about that. Um, the um, Ghost in the Machine. Well, yeah, Ghost in the Machine is is kind of a an exceptional beer. Yeah, yeah. and there's a few that I really like, but this right here, especially on the lighter side, this mm-hmm. is a very easy to drink, very um, approachable IPA that doesn't leave you with that IPA bitterness that just lingers. This actually finishes with a little bit of that grapefruit or uh, lemon zest kind of Th- this taste beer- in your mouth. It's just great. This beer makes me happy. This is summer beer at its it best. It makes right me here. happy. Yes, I love it. I love it. I will be. I will be stocking up on this. Were you talking about smoking and toasting influences <laughs> sales? Yeah, it's going to influence sales today. Yeah, and you know what? Since it's an IPA, you can't save it. You've got to drink mm-hmm, it. So you got to stock mm-hmm. up on it, and then you got to drink it all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've made that mistake, <laughs> mistake. before. And, uh, you so, know, sometimes I, you, you know, um 
anybody out there could just hear those air quotes, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure <laughs> like, if you're not watching us, I'm sure yeah. you can hear the air quotes. Mistake. Mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, that's just exceptional. That's In an fact, absolute joy right It's there. almost... Now, I, I use it for our first beer because uh, the next couple that we taste here on the show today will we'll be going up a little mm-hmm. in ABV, but wow, that's going to be a hard beer to top. That's that's a yeah. damn good yeah. beer. And you know it's so interesting because look how pale it is too. Like well, it is it is very orange juice ish looking yeah, except it's paler, so pale, right? Pale. It looks like, I said grapefruit earlier. Look at think grapefruit mm-hmm. juice right there. Mm-hmm. It's so you were so right without about the, the pink. You know, I mean, it's so right about the grapefruit. Wow. Well, and and they have grapefruits that the juice is that color. Yeah. Not all of them are the ruby red type. Uh, right. This is type. so good. But the, but it's such a different taste from like the um, Shiner ruby red. Uh, for example, which right, I thought of right. when I said ruby red, uh, that's got a grapefruit flavor that's completely different from what this is. Right, but that's got a little bit of that grapefruit bitterness to it. That, right, um, and I like this that doesn't. Beer. Yeah, I do I too. Like that beer, this, but, but this isn't like that. This is this is when I say grapefruit, I don't mean it's the predominant flavor. It is. Right, it's is the, an underlying, really nice thing about it. You know what I like about this? Everything. I've already poured a second. I'm yeah, almost done. I'm, I'm going to have to go uh, back at this. Wow. Uh, a real winner here. Yeah, absolutely. 5% 10. Good IPA. job, Spindle Tap. On yeah, that. Spindle Tap. I'm proud of them. I'm, uh, you know, uh, I always get proud when breweries from my area yeah. develop something really awesome. Yes. Yeah, not just like, hey, that's a solid beer. That's great. But when you go, wow, I want I want people to be buying this and, and shipping it back to their home states because it's I like the. Available. I like the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The car on there with the, as well. with the tent on the windows, yeah, yes, and it says <laughs> very nice where the where the car tag would be. It says Citra, Citra. I like it. <laughs> uh, all right, so we will uh, take a break and come back. We have uh, more to discuss in terms of uh, of light beers. We have another list from Popular Mechanics. Plus, uh, President Trump has clamped down on travel to Cuba. So you had a window. If you didn't take it, you may not be able to. It's going to get harder and harder uh, to travel from the U.S. to Cuba and. Uh, there's just a number of other things going on that we haven't had a chance to talk about, but having uh, had guests for the past couple of weeks. Uh, I will also tell you about the uh, FDA has extended the commenting period for cigar testing. Now, that may sound like a very dry and boring thing, but it's important, so I'll tell you why uh, when we come back. And we're going to taste a little black raspberry, oak-aged sour ale with black raspberries from West Brook Brewing, that sounds which is fun. a hard thing to say, but I'm have a feeling it's going to be an easy, easy <laughs> thing to drink. Uh, so we'll be right back, and uh, and our music is back. Yay! Thank you, Caitlin you and uh, Adam. You can sing at the end of the show if you want. Stay tuned to the very but, end. But that's when you turn it off. Ian to sing. <laughs> Welcome back. It's Smoking and Toasting. It's show number 143. We're brought to you by B&B Butchers and Restaurant at 1814 Washington Avenue, Houston, and in the shops at Clear Fork in Fort Worth. By the way, we talk a lot about the bacon at B&B, but I should just mention uh, maybe one of the best steaks I've ever had in my life. Yeah. I had at B&B. I mean, <laughs> these guys know what they're doing. You know, so. I was I've probably said this before, but uh, I can make great steak at my house. Yes. But I can't dry age. You can't dry age it at your house. That's right. At my house. So um, the fact that they do that and, and make that steak is so good. But you can actually. They have a butcher shop. That's why, that's mm-hmm. why it's B&B Butchers. So you can go and you buy can actually go the dry buy, age steak and take it home. If you're going to make a steak at your house, why wouldn't you go buy there? And get a dry aged steak that you can make and just make it amazing. Well, that's really a great idea. Like I, I had not done. Yeah, that, if you're going to grill great steak, idea. Yeah, yeah. you know, because I mean, most most grocery stores you can get you can get it up to a um, you can get it up to a specific level mm-hmm. of meat. Right, right. But if you go there, you're going to get not only that next level of beef, but it's going to be dry aged. And I mean. <laughs> It'd be hard to mess that up unless you you know cook it thoroughly. I, I just wanted to, which would be a mistake. Yeah, I think if you yeah. went by there. I just wanted to mention that that image of the Ronald McDonald's dancing around the KFC is That's still in my brain. Pretty, can, we, can we pull that image back uh, up can, one more time? Can you put that can back just, up? This is one of the ones, since I didn't have my images for the cigars. Can, can just, we swap our background and just have that <laughs> just as our background? just dancing Ronald McDonald's, <laughs> smoking and toasting, <laughs> dancing too. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, that'd be pretty good. So I mentioned this last week, but I didn't give you his name. Uh, you know, Metallica's Blackened Whiskey is, uh, is, first of all, it's actually really good. It is and good. We were 
were we were. Pleased I saw it on the shelf the other out. day. It's not even that expensive. No, it's not. And thankfully, uh, there was a uh, <clears throat> there was a uh, week where we were supposed to have a guest on the mm-hmm. show, and they uh, stiffed us. They like they didn't show. At the last minute, right, and I was like, "Oh no, what are we going to do?" Turns out, Keegan, who works in the office, mm-hmm. actually had a bottle of blackened with him and was kind enough to let us taste it on the show. And we both, I think, yeah, really it was, liked it. Yeah, it was good. Well, and I'm not really surprised because Dave Pickerel, mm-hmm. the late Dave Pickerel, who is uh, from, you know Maker's from Mark Pig and Whistle Pig and, and Maker's Mark, yeah, yeah. Uh, he is uh, he's the guy that came up with the recipe. He's the guy that did the distilling. I don't know if he's the guy that picked which Metallica song they were going to blast at it while it was aging in the casks, but but he's the guy responsible basically for how that whiskey came out. And of course, he's you know he's a master distiller or was a master distiller. He passed away last year unexpectedly when he was in California actually doing a promotional thing for Blackened. Uh, And so it's taken them a while, but Metallica has now appointed a new uh, master distiller, and his name is Rob Dietrich. Rob was... um, in Denver, he's been for the last 13 years uh, distilling an American uh, single malt whiskey called Stranahan's. Have you heard of Stranahan's? Oh, yeah, Stranahan's. Yeah, Stranahan's yeah, yeah. Delicious. So yeah, yeah. I, I have not had Stranahan's, mm-hmm. but he's the guy, basically, who uh, Mike over at taking uh, over Blacken. So. At Reserve 101, I walked in there one day, and Mike mm-hmm. uh, owns the bar over there, and he's... Uh, I said, what well, you know? What should I try? What's good? And he goes, here, check this out. And he puts strand of hands up there, and I tried a few of their expressions. A few of them, yeah, yes. it's all yeah. delicious. Well, uh, he from is Colorado, yeah. He's not going to change the you know recipe or the the design, but any further you know updates or mm-hmm. or uh, anything, he's the guy first of all who will be responsible for getting that same product every Those time. Those are big shoes, yeah, big shoes to fill. And then obviously, if they do any sort of expansion of the brand, he'll be the guy that uh, that does it. So I have a feeling uh, that the boys in Metallica are in good hands. I like what he said, though. He goes, it's kind of like, he goes, it was kind of like getting a call, asking him if he wanted to join the band. <laughs> 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 so uh, yeah, that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Hey, Ian, Metallica's on the phone for you. They want to know if you'll come distill their whiskey. I'd be like, only if I get to play the triangle sometimes as live shows. (laughs) If I can do that, I'm in. I'm absolutely in. Um, It has been a a really interesting week. I mentioned that the Trump administration has clamped down on uh, travel to Cuba. It's like, it's like I said, it's just getting harder and harder uh, to go after it had sort of pulled uh, back a little bit. And so if you are, you know, thinking about Heading to Cuba, new regulations will really restrict the ability of U.S. citizens to travel there. Uh, It really is another major step in rolling back uh, the Obama era efforts to uh, open the door to better relations. And, you know, it's they've been pretty clear that this administration is interested in regime change there. So who knows where this will go or or how it will be. And, you know, I don't really want to get into the politics of it. I'm just bummed that it's a little harder to go to Cuba. That's all. I, I have never been and would love to would love to visit. So you can still go. You just have to go to another country first and then fly in from there. Right. So uh, and by another country, I don't mean Miami. Uh, that's you know some people <laughs> which, might, which can seem like another yeah, country. some people might <laughs> interpret that to be another country but uh, but actually no uh, it's not in if we would turn our attention to Mr. Twirly gig we have another beer sitting and uh, and twirling on the stand and this Mr. one is Mr. Twirly yeah, gig I presume this one is from Westbrook Brewing and that's a hard thing to say really fast so that's why I slow down every time they're from Mount Pleasant South Carolina and this is their black raspberry it's an oak aged sour ale made with black raspberries and I wonder if you might want to take that bad boy from Mr. Twirligig and uh, and see if we can do a little uh, sound effect creation there. I can. I, I wanted to point out though right before yeah. I do the sound effect uh, creation, you handed me this uh, really nice um, bottle opener from mm-hmm. Deep Eddie Vodka yes. and, and we, we've had Deep Eddie on here. They're, mm-hmm. they're uh, all pretty awesome stuff uh, as far as vodka is concerned. But my question is this. Mm-hmm. Why would you need a bottle opener for Deep Eddie Vodka? I, I think that Deep Eddie made those, to, if you're asking, like, seriously, I think they made those so they could give them to bartenders uh, so that when bartenders are behind the bar opening your beer, you see them, Eddie. they're flashing yeah, the Deep Eddie you. in front of you in case you're with someone who wants a uh, vodka. So this is not a product-specific thing. That's actually, this is just a- that's actually mine. I brought that in from home, <laughs> and I left it here last week, and I was shocked to find it still here. 
to be honest with you. Because <laughs> no, I was a, just I was just looking at the of irony of, of something that you never need yeah, to open no, deep vodka. You, you you definitely don't need it for your deep eddy bottle. So uh, uh, I like that. See, I like how, the, how you fumbled around with that and got a you little, need a little extra uh, yeah, out so of the sound effect. If you don't have that sound, you know. <laughs> So that gave us a pretty good little uh, little burst of uh, carbonation, I think. There, when you opened it, it we'll did. have to see little, if it is. Oh my as gosh, this looks like wine. <coughs> looks well, like, it, it really does, Ian. That that is the color of a deep sort of a red wine, maybe like a Malbec or something. I want to like hold on. I want to. I want to uh, pour this. Pour it right in front on of my camera, camera so yep. you can see this. <laughs> Look at the color on that. If it weren't for the carbonation. <laughs> <laughs> it really would look like a uh, a cup of wine that you just poured. It's the grape juice that your mom used to give you uh-huh. when you were a kid on uh, uh, New Year's Eve. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Or like in church where you have the grape the juice sp- instead of the right, uh, the sparkling grape juice here. Mm-hmm. This uh, you 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 heard you've heard the little kids and mom Jesus blood tastes like grape juice. <laughs> um, so. so this- Wow, this it smells is, it is wonderful in the nose. Yeah, this smells delicious. And you know, you can smell the sour in uh in a beer. <laughs> well, you sure can. And uh and this smells so good to me. I love sour beers anyway. Um you would have a hard time making a beer too sour for me. I I love Petrus. I love This is sour. A lot of us, I, I just see. took a sip. It's, <laughs> saw, and I like I it, but it's face. sour. It's sour. It, it's sour enough that it gets you in that spot right below oh, your ears. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, yeah, and I haven't tried this yet, but I know like a lot of, like if you're used to sours like a Berliner Weiss, that's mm-hmm. lightly sour. Well, this has got some of the characteristics of a Berliner Weiss, but those blackberries, I don't know. It, it's 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 more, this is more sour oh, than the yeah. raspberry AF, but it's delicious. Wow! Yeah, this it's is delicious. This has got a lot more sour to it. This leaves your whole mouth watering like madness. Yes, it does, and and really kind of craving that next. Wow! Mouthful. This is mm-hmm. this is good. I love the carbonation and such small little uh, bubbles that make it dance mm-hmm. a little bit. It's kind of a silky carbonation. So yeah, yeah what can is... you tell us about uh, about the bottle? There's a lot of writing on the bottle. Um. <laughs> Let's see. This beer is a blend of 33% dry sherry oak cask matured, mm-hmm. uh, mixed fermentation saison. You can get the uh, the ca- the oak cask. Yes. You really can. Oh, absolutely. It's so mm-hmm. dry. Mm-hmm. And 67% um, oak, what's the word? Faudry, F-O-U-D-R-E, aged sour beer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. Somebody fix that out there. Tell me what I'm doing wrong there. Uh, it was blended and refermented with black raspberries for three months in um, so that's when second it's... use um, Marsala. So something. Yeah. So this is why uh, I think it's so sour because it's a sour to begin with, and then it was refermented with the blackberries, which probably gave. A lot more sourness. Uh, a lot more. Man, this is it. this is delicious. You're, it's quite a beer. It you almost, are two for two today. By it the way. almost feels um, when you're drinking it. It almost drinks like a champagne. Just much yeah, more, the, much more so, sour. Obviously, it's so dry, like a good champagne mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm. it doesn't leave that lingering. Um, taste in your mouth either so dry and so quick no in fact but what it does is as soon as you swallow it your mouth starts to water and want more like it's oh yeah it's it's got what i call the dorito effect (laughs) Uh, apparently (laughs) and i've read this i don't know if it's true or not but apparently the people who came up with the formula for doritos part of that formula is it's somehow formulated i don't know what they use or how they do it scientifically but it's somehow formulated to make you crave another one as soon as yes, you eat it, yes. uh, which is, if you think about it, remember their whole They're, they're called hypnotic campaign. mind flavonoids. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I would call them. That's the um, exact yeah. scientific term. <laughs> uh, but remember their whole campaign for a while was, eat all you want, we'll make more? Yes. Uh, yes. That's, that's kind of where they're coming <laughs> from. Uh, but this has some of that, like, as soon as you swallow that sip, you're like oh, I want to. I want a little more. There was of that. a there's a gum you can get like at uh, an academy or any of the sport Dick Sports or any of those mm-hmm, places. Mm-hmm. It's always right by the counter. It's called Quench Gum yes. or one of those. The, it does the same thing that mm-hmm. this does. It just makes your mouth water mm, like yes, crazy. Yes, I know what you're talking about. Um, this is uh, this is this is delightful. This is a bottle that that at that size bottle. That's a uh, one point uh, seven uh, pints. 
Uh, one pint, seven fluid ounces. Make that make sense. Um, and this is something you share with somebody. I don't it know. It totally is. You I don't know. I can mow open. through an entire bottle yeah. of this on my but own. You but you crack sure this is. open and you enjoy it with someone, and you you just kind of savor the the, right. the flavors. And this right is now, this you know? is one of those beers. And and just look at what we're doing right now. This is a conversation beer. So you get to sit right. and talk about it. Talk thing. about what you're tasting and the it. Again, I, we were talking about this earlier with cigars. It's an experience. Yes. And this is a this is not just a beer that you have because you're thirsty. This is a beer you have to enjoy that whole experience. What I what I love about the aftertaste on this is that aftertaste of the black raspberries that there's a, I didn't realize it at first, but there's a little linger of that and the and the kind of oakiness yes. to it. And uh, it's and it's not sweet. No, it's kind of the, no, it's not. <laughs> it's a, uh, but although it does have this tiny hint of, you know, when you eat like a sour jam, like if your grandma makes yeah. like a sour jam, and it's got that tiny little bit of sweetness on top of all the sour. Right. It's got a little taste of that, or like a really good cherry pie mm-hmm. has that. You know what I mean? It's got the sour of the cherry, but that little bit of sweet kind yes. of riding on top. I do detect a little bit of that, but no, you're right. It's not like a. It's not like a sweet fruity beer at right, all. Right, right. No, fruity, yes, yeah. not sweet. Fruity, yes, not not so, sweet. I'm yeah. for it. Want to mention uh, that uh, our good buddy uh, Abel Rodriguez uh, was in the uh, chat earlier and was talking about uh, when we were talking about low ABV beers. And uh, Abel is uh, a guy that uh, that really liked to. Oh, I got to swipe left because I turned chat off. And I keep doing it again. Abel's a guy that used to uh, work here. Ah, thank you. And uh, also worked at uh, either works still or worked for a little while at uh, No Label. I'm not sure which. But anyway, he's a a good beer guy. He talked about how Rattlers are low ABV and very tasty to drink. And they're good. We've had some Rattlers on the show before. They always put so much lemon in Rattlers, though. And then uh, also uh, Saison's, Farmhouse Sales, uh, uh, tend to run a little lower. And this, um, interestingly... Can you check what the ABV on this is? I think it's more than the 5% 10. 5.7. 5.7. So it's still fairly low. Yeah, this is not a high. And this has got a bit of a farmhouse ale vibe to it underneath underneath the blackberry. uh, uh, It's 33% dry sherry cask matured mixed fermentation saison. Wow, that's delicious. I wish... That there was an easier way to say that. I, I, I'm sure there is, but beer I have no good. Idea, but I have um, no idea what it is. Yeah, beer that's good. A, that's that's very wordy. Somebody wow. got paid by the uh, by the letter there. Uh, wow. Well, I'm I'm digging it. I'm digging it, and I will take more. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'm going to pour a little bit more on that. So while Ian's pouring, whoa, well, that was almost an accident. This is not a beer we want to. Uh, no, spill. we don't want to spill this one. Um, while this Ian's, one will glue your feet to the floor. While Ian's uh, p- uh, pouring that, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about this whiskey that we're going to taste in the, in the next segment, and we're going to be talking about whiskey, great whiskeys for Father's Day also. But the whiskey we're going to taste uh, in the next segment is from the Kiryoshi uh, Distillery, which is a very respected uh, Japanese distillery, and they have just released or, or recently released the Totten. T-O-T-T-O-N. It is a new Japanese whiskey. Are you cleaning Mr. Whirligig? I'm I'm actually wiping it by just well, holding by the, just holding the, the paper <laughs> towel still and letting it. I don't know if Mr. Twirligig is is strong enough. I'm going to find something to cover this that looks like a record. Yeah, that would be perfect. That would be that awesome. Would be perfect. You spin me around like a record. Uh, so uh, anyway, this is the whiskey we'll be tasting in the next segment. It's called the Totten, T O T T O N, and it's been a very long time since we had Japanese whiskey on the show. It has that's been why a while. I thought, huh? Okay, let's uh, let let's do it. So this bottle is unopened. I've never tasted it before, but I'm looking forward to it. We'll get to that. Plus, uh, great whiskeys to suggest for Father's Day, whether you are a father and you need to suggest them to someone, or whether you're looking to buy a gift for a father, whiskey is always a good one. I'm sorry? You're not my real daddy. (laughs) We'll be right back. It's smoking and toasting. Oh, I thought maybe you were supposed to sing. (laughs) Welcome back. It's smoking and toasting. We are so glad to have you listening to the program, and we are brought to you by B and B Butchers and Restaurant at eighteen fourteen Washington Ave in Houston, and in the shops at Clear Fork in Fort Worth. Also brought to you by BB Lemon on Washington Ave, and a brand new location coming soon in Houston, Texas. So uh, excited! BB Lemon is awesome, by the way. I like uh, man Chastity over there makes uh, yeah. the best drinks. You're talking cocktail heaven over yes. there. Yeah, oh, so really, good. really good stuff. They don't have a huge. They're not like those places where you go in and they have like. 
300 cocktails available. No. But their cocktail menu, very wonderfully curated. They've got the right stuff on it. It's, uh, it's really, really good. So really, really good. So uh, check them out if you are in the Houston or, uh, or Dallas area. And uh, welcome back to Smoking and Toasted. Uh, on our show today, the best light craft beers. We have more of that coming in the next uh, segment, not that we'll be sampling, but that we can talk about. Well, the guys at Popular Mechanics decided they wanted to make a best light craft beer list, so I'll be able to share that with you. Uh, because I know you were, I know before this, the show started this today, you were thinking. This doesn't seem like the preeminent. Uh, I know before the show started, you list. were thinking, I really like, you know, low ABV beers during the summer, especially really good crafty ones. I wonder what the guys at Popular Mechanics think is really good. Sorry, in my mind, you know how uh, the, the industry, uh, to, to a certain degree, waits for cigar uh, aficionados. Yeah. Top list to come yeah, out every yeah, year, right? And then they with go with okay, a little bit th- of their breath held, you know. Yes, yes, sure. All right, I, I don't see that happening with uh, Popular <laughs> Mechanics beer list. <laughs> well, maybe we need to change that. After all, these are hardworking guys. If Please. anybody needs a good, tasty, low calorie, low ABV uh, craft beer, it would be the Mechanics. I want Popular Mechanics to let me know what the best, you know, <laughs> USA made tool. Yeah, what, what's the best socket wrench you can yes, buy? Yes, that's yeah. right. And yeah. what the best return policy? <laughs> Remember when Sears had the no questions asked return policy? Yeah, They're, Sears Sears Craftsman Tools have become the crap brand for Lowe's now. Yeah, I, my dad and they would used cry to be, if he they knew used that. to be the be all end all <laughs> yeah. of well made tools. I know yeah. it's it's, uh, it's it's well Sears has practically gone the way of the dodo as yeah. a, as a company. So. Uh, but yeah, I don't I, think they kept up with the times. Very I know well. I'll be combing cigar aficionado uh, uh, towards the end of the year when they release their best crescent wrenches list. So, that's right. <laughs> yeah, so we'll look forward to that. Okay, Father's Day right around the corner. Uh, I am a, uh, a, a father by proxy. I have two uh, stepsons, so I don't know. <clears throat> You're not my real daddy. I don't know if my stepsons will be buying me anything for Father's Day, but uh, no, I'm just just messing with you, Adam. Uh, one a, of them buying the, for for those of you that don't get the joke. One of them is our engineer. Yeah, here. yeah, exactly. So our he's, he's our producer. So uh, anyway, uh, on Father's Day, uh, you should probably take a moment uh, to remember all of the bottles of liquor that you raided from your parents' liquor cabinet that belong to your dad. And maybe re- think about returning the favor, and it's time to uh, do so by looking at some appropriate, and and we'll we'll try to pass along the price. I think on these two, the general you know uh, retail price of these, so you can kind of know what you're getting into. But yeah, good to my dad. Was, my dad doesn't drink. I mean, he'll have a margarita every once in a while, but he doesn't really drink. So I could I wouldn't be buying this for my dad for Father's Day, but uh, you know. A lot, lot of dads would appreciate a really good bottle of whiskey. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so uh, Henry McKenna, single barrel bourbon is the first one on the list. Are you familiar? Um, I'm familiar. It was uh, once an under the radar bottle, but the single barrel is now one uh, that most bourbon aficionados know to look for. If your dad's a fan and you can find a bottle, he will certainly be stoked. Uh, retail is about thirty nine dollars on uh, the Henry McKenna. It t- spends ten years in oak. And is bottled at 100 proof. So. There are some great finds out there, by the yes. way. Yes. Yeah. And not terribly expensive. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, now, I know I'm going to get, I'm going to mispronounce this, so I will count on our commenters to correct me, but uh, Napogue Castle, 16 year single malt. Are you familiar with the Napogue Castle? Yes. K N A P P O G U E. Am I pronouncing it wrong? I couldn't tell you that. Okay, but, but you were familiar. familiar. Yes. Uh, you're familiar. If your dad favors Irish whiskey, they say this single malt spends its first 14 years in ex-bourbon casks and then completes the aging uh, process in uh, sherry wood. Uh, the result is, they say, a deliciously balanced uh, dram with nutty notes and a fruity sweetness that dad will dig. Uh, it's about $68 as the retail on uh, the for, for those unpronounceable of you that don't know the Napoleon. vocabulary, a dram Castle. is a pour of whiskey. A dram is a pour, yes. Are you familiar with Nika? N-I-K-K-A. Nika, Nika coffee. whiskey from the barrel. Yep. Uh, it's a Japanese whiskey. It's not the one we're going to be tasting mm-hmm. in a moment. Uh, but it is a, uh, a a $67 Japanese whiskey. I don't so know that not, particular bottle, but I'm familiar with the brand. I will say a lot of times Japanese whiskeys can get very expensive, mm-hmm. I've noticed. I mean, you're, you're, you can find bottles under 100 but... 
it's easier to find bottles. The Japanese no, are not doing whiskey half-assed by any means. No, that's like for sure. They, that's for sure. They make great whiskey. They do say in this uh, article that the uh, Nika from the barrel, that's what it's called, Nika whiskey from the barrel, is a solid option. It's 103 proof, and it's a big, flavorful whiskey at quite a reasonable price point. $67 is the suggested retail. So I think that from the one. barrel would refer to as barrel proof. Barrel or, proof. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Stranahan Sherry Cask Single Malt. We were just talking about Sherry. Uh, I haven't had the Sherry uh, Cask. Uh, the I certainly like the strand of hands. Well, the, it says here for the dad that's into the American single malt scene, we like Stranahan's Sherry Cask Single Malt. It's a four year old juice that gets transferred to 40 year old uh, Oloroso Sherry Casks for an additional amount of time, and it's rich and flavorful. Fruity sweetness and uh, flavors of salt and leather. And $76. Vocabulary terms again. Single malt is actually telling you two different things about a whiskey. Tell us. One is preach it, brother. Single meaning coming from a single distillery and malt being the bulk of the uh, mash bill. This is this is why it's so good to have you. Uh, it's why it's why the show sucks when you're not here. <laughs> so and why it's going to suck it, in a couple of weeks. In a couple of weeks, right? Yeah. You're going to miss me. <laughs> uh, the McCollin Twelve Sherry Oak Cask, uh, a that space side icon, a classic gift. It is about fifty eight dollars, and it ages for a dozen years in Spanish sherry casks. And it's a uh, you are familiar with that one, oh, Ian, yeah. the McAllen yeah, Twelve, absolutely. The, the Sherry Oak, not just the McAllen Twelve, but no, McAllen the Sherry Oak Sherry. specifically. Yeah. Yes. How about how about uh, Glendronic Eighteen? I actually have a Glendronic Seventeen on my shelf right a now that I have just the littlest bit left yeah? of it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so good. I, I we had the Eighteen. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you watch the intro, one of the guys on there is Chris Morris, and I believe mm-hmm. he had the Eighteen with him that day, and I drank much of it. Well, that's good. It's about a hundred eighty dollar bottle. Yes. So uh, it says in the uh, article here, and by the way, this article comes from a website I'd never encountered before called Fatherly. So huh. it's it's all about the website old websites about being a dad basically or or how to deal with your dad or how to buy your dad whiskey uh, for Father's Day. Uh, this is the secret world of stepdadness that I don't understand. Yeah, well, I didn't know any of this existed <laughs> before. So um, <laughs> if somebody's looking to share a gift with us, they say in the article, Glendronic 18 is a bottle we'd love to see a bow on. <laughs> nice. uh, it is a uh, uh, soft and rich whiskey with notes of uh, wood, leather, tobacco, and a finish that keeps you cozy well into the night. Now. Ah, for they're 70- referring to the whiskey hug. Yeah, that's that the feeling that comes hug's back. A wonderful thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can get a nice hug from Booker's. Uh, Seventy six bucks. <laughs> Booker's uh, is awesome. Uh, at any moment uh, in our local shop, they say there are a few editions of Booker's on the shelf. But no matter what's available, at yours it's a great gift option yeah, for Booker's. dad. And yeah. Booker's usually comes in that nice wooden. Uh, yes, that nice wooden but like, like the little book. That's the same right, thing. Right, right. Uh, yeah, it's really nice. Every release they that's say a is a special great bourbon. Presentation. Uh, rich vanilla and wood, leading the mouth to a happy place. I like that. <laughs> leading the mouth to a happy place. Just on a funny note, I had a bottle of Booker's that uh, my. Uh, uh, brother-in-law gave to me for Christmas a few years mm-hmm, back, mm-hmm. and I lost it. How do you lose a bottle of Booker's? That's what I kept wondering. For about a year, I was like, I know I had a bottle, and then I found it. And it was? It was in my bicycle bag. <laughs> <laughs> Where my bicycle shoes usually go. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> like, it, I, think I, I think I went to Austin, and I thought, oh, I'll just bring this, and we'll have this with friends, and I forgot about it. Forgot that you put Didn't it Didn't think in about there. it for a year, yeah. so I finally like, found come it. Come on, it's Booker's. i got to find that I somewhere. lost a bottle of Booker's and then found it. Uh, Knob Creek Cask Strength Rye. Now, Knob Creek, I mean, these guys can almost do no wrong. Are you familiar with this particular? Not the rye. I haven't tried the rye. Say not but every store. But I do love the Knob Creek in general, just as a, a go-to, and their their a single barrel is outstanding. It says, while not every <coughs> store carries Knob Creek cask strength rye, it's not hard to find, but this whiskey is crazy good. They say if... if uh, uh, Dad likes rye. You need to track down a bottle. It's a rich mouthful, spicy, peppery notes, playing off a deeply satisfying caramel sweetness, and it's 119.6 proof. So that's some undiluted that's uh, big, yeah. flavor. Yeah, uh, 73 bucks for the Knob Creek Cask Strength Rye. Notice how I slow down when I say those words because I'm because <laughs> uh, it's they're hard to say. Now um, I have had this next one. I don't currently have a bottle, which is one of the great tragedies of. Being a dad, mm-hmm. uh, or stepdad in my case, and not having this, but the Glenmore and G Signet. Oh yeah, oh my God, this is a good that's whiskey. outstanding. It is just amazing. If you feel like uh, dining deep 
for dad this year, a Glenmore G Signet is a real treat. It's about a two hundred dollar bottle, yeah. so it's. A, but boy, is it good. Now I will. I'm going to go ahead and add an addendum to that. Is yeah. uh, Glenmore G makes the Lasanta, which is their sherry cask finish. That's great. Now I do have some Lasanta. No one will ever be disappointed with that. That's that true. is an absolute true. staple on my shelf at all That's times. That's true. That's true. How about Michter's Unblended American Whiskey? Mm, you, I have that on my shelf. Uh, I said, want to teach Dad a lesson? Give him a bottle of Michter's Unblended American Whiskey. And when he asks, what the hell is Unblended American Whiskey? Uh, you can drop a little knowledge on him. You know? uh, it's, uh, what it, while it's to bourbon, Michter's doesn't call it that because they can't. The juice is aged in whiskey-soaked used barrels rather than new charred oak, and that's a requirement to meet the definition of, uh, the definition of bourbon. But a rose by any other name, they say, it's a rich, rich, luscious whiskey with intense notes of butterscotch, vanilla, dried fruit, and a hint of mint. And it's 41 bucks. Yeah, so and it's delicious. It's not a, an expensive whiskey at all. So that was the list, the 10 great uh, whiskeys that you can uh, get for Dad. Notice I immediately, re- uh, you know, Gravitated towards the most expensive one. The All right, so I'm yeah. also going to point out a couple quick things. Yep. The combat bottle of Buffalo Trace, and by combat oh. bottle, I mean what we call a handle or the mm-hmm. 1.75, I think is like less than $40. Yes, yes. And yep. not only is it great drinking by itself, great for mixers, it makes everything you put in, you know, put with it fantastic. I start to say, I think I got a bottle of that from one of the boys. Uh, Last year, but I think it was Christmas. I don't think it was Father's Day, but still. <laughs> yeah, uh, Eagle still Rare is another one when Eagle they have Rare it. Is great. Uh, those yes. are and those are inexpensive. They're not really pricey overall. Like a regular uh, a regular uh, fifth of of um, Buffalo Trace is twenty six dollars, yeah. twenty six, twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's it. And that's and a so great so worth every single penny. It, it, way above its price uh, to quality yeah, would be way huge above its on price that. on yeah. it. Uh, speaking of whiskey, let's uh, let's try a little Japanese whiskey, shall we? This is. Uh, from uh, Karyoshi Distillery, it's the Totten Japanese whiskey, and uh, so I don't know that much about Japanese whiskey, but I know that this distillery is widely uh, praised and uh, has a huge and wonderful reputation. I like that sound too. I don't like it quite as much as the cork popping, a, but I well, do see, like it. Well, see, as my dad would have explained years ago, uh, this this is a very modern whiskey company, and mm-hmm. that they're using a screw cap. You right. know, a cork is a very very old technology, old school. Yes, and uh, if you're still using a cork, then you are obviously very behind the times. He would explain mm-hmm. us about wine, by the way. <laughs> um, well, I, you know. <laughs> Uh, my, my dad's wh- views on wine were not very classy. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I understand. But I, I always figured if I was doing the screw top wine, I'd taken a step up because at least it wasn't in a freaking box. That's you know that's <laughs> the way I was. Looking. But now they actually put some fairly good wines in those uh, in those boxes. Not all of them are, of course. But uh, yeah, like a nice Chablis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I remember. Uh, I remember my uh, ex-wife would sometimes buy jug wine to make uh, sangria, yeah, yeah. and uh, not n- not to criticize my ex-wife, but she was a little concerned about appearances. She would have to tell the clerk at the store where she was buying the jug wine, <laughs> I'm making sangria, because she didn't want the clerk to think she was buying the bottle of jug wine uh, to take home. And uh, and that's and like you know it's, it's funny because that's like running in a. That's like running into somebody at the dollar store that looks embarrassed to be there, and you have to explain, I'm, I'm here too. Yeah, right. Exactly. Look, I'm, I actually exactly. have to be here to see you exactly. here. <laughs> yeah, if the clerk knows that that jug wine's cheap, it's probably because they bought it and taken it home themselves. <laughs> so uh, so there you go. Again, not to not to criticize my ex-wife, because as we all know, that can get expensive. So <laughs> let's, let's go back now to, um, uh, to, this, uh, to this Japanese whiskey, shall we? The, uh, the Tatori. <clears throat> have, you, uh, have you done any research yet? Uh, no, I haven't, but I'll read while you're doing research. Uh, Matsui Whiskey Taturi, uh bourbon barrel finish using a small new oak barrel, sweet and gorgeous scent, reminiscent of uh, vanilla and fruit, spicy and refreshing mm. taste, was, finish, it was finished in a mild and refreshing taste of uh, nature's spring water. I'm wondering if there's, um, if there's a little bit of... Uh, 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 a little bit of... Uh, uh, Vocabulary going on there. That's yeah, well, the, funny well, that me. that sure that may be translated. Yeah, so sometimes, so, <laughs> so sometimes it, it may have it may have read a lot better in the original uh, in the original Japanese. But Ian, here's here's what I got out of that. There was a, a 
a sort of a, a an inclination towards it being a gentle kind of a, a easy drinking uh, whiskey, and that's exactly what it is. It's it's delicious, by the way, and, and you should do some research of your own here. The name but, of uh, the newest distillery, Kurayoshi Distillery, mm-hmm. and then it says a new wind of whiskey. Mm. It is very easy to drink, but full of flavor. Not a lot of burn uh, or heat at all, and just almost a little too easy to drink. This is almost like what the Skelly is to uh, to tequila. This kind of is to uh, to whiskey because it goes down so smooth. Wow, that is uh, that is really good. Yeah, and I'm getting lots of cinnamon and apple and, and brown sugar. Brown sugar, enough, yeah. And- yeah, I may be confusing cinnamon and brown sugar, but no, no, I'm, there's cinnamon in. My there. mom used to make cinnamon toast with cinnamon and brown sugar and, and butter <laughs> when I was a kid. No, that's, that's, it that's has what it that, reminds that, me like of. Brown sugar, or maybe not brown sugar. Maybe the uh, what do you call it? The uh, turbinado sugar. Mm-hmm, maybe that's what mm-hmm, I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. It's more of the unrefined sugar, not brown sugar. Right, like sugar in the raw. Yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah, that's. Th- it has some of that. Uh, this is quite good. It's very sweet. Yes, this is very. This is very bourbon sweet with no smokiness. To yeah, it. I was going to say it's very different from the bourbons, and and you nailed it. It has none of the smokiness, and that's that's what's different about it from bourbons. It's also extremely easy drinking, don't you think? Uh, I agreed, agreed. There's a there's a touch of heat that happens right on the initial swallow, mm-hmm. and then uh, that goes away almost instantly. It goes away so and then quick. Comes back in a nice little warm. It's a very small amount of. Of heat that comes it's, back. It's, it's not, not a, a big, not a big whiskey hug. Not yeah. a big chest full of right, warmth, warmth kind of yes. hug. Mm-hmm. It's a very specific back of the palate mm-hmm. kind of thing. It's uh, it's interesting how that can be that way. The mouth feels actually a little thinner than I would have expected. I agree with that as well. Um, uh, but that doesn't detract from it in any kind of way. Um, I get the feeling this would be great with a cigar. Yeah, that's probably so. Like I expect it from the flavor. I expected this to be a little oilier. Uh, mm-hmm. Than it is, it's it's a little bit, but not not a ton. So it's mm. got that. I think that may uh, the the little bit of oiliness it does have kind of compensates for the thinner mouth feel and I makes so, it yeah. makes it spread the flavor around mm-hmm. a little better and stick to the tongue a little bit. That's when when we say oily, that's one of the things that that does is it really spreads the flavor around the mouth and sticks to the tongue kind of thing. It strikes me that this is a whiskey that if you were to you know open it early in the evening and just sip on it for a while. That it would kind of keep opening up, sort of like new flavors and stuff to you as you go. There's a banana ripeness to uh-huh. it that that really kind of comes out after a few sips of this. Like once your palate is a little more attuned to this, and I think probably too because the last beer we had was a very sour, and this mm-hmm. is so sweet mm-hmm. compared to that. This is if you like a sweet uh, whiskey, this is this would be great with uh, with desserts. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like. Any kind of chocolate cake or ice cream yes. kind of thing, this uh-huh. would this would be a really nice. Uh, add to it. I don't. I don't. I'm think, pretty impressed. Yeah, I, I have to agree. Uh, what does a bottle of this run? Do you know? I want to say this is in the neighborhood of sixty. Yeah. So it's that, not that feels uh, about right. It's, it's not, not a super expensive. Uh, and again, Japanese whiskey, it can be almost a surprise to find it under a hundred dollars a bottle. Yeah. So, uh, so this is a uh, I, I, when I saw this I thought this would be a really interesting thing to try a less expensive Japanese whiskey that I'm you know not at all familiar with not any of the brands that I've uh, you know that I've uh, familiar with before but I did some reading about the distillery and the uh, Kuriyoshi distilling is widely respected uh, among Japanese whiskey makers as you know being the real deal. So, uh, and I, would, I can see why. I, I you know, concur. I'm still, I kind of like that, that, that unrefined sugar mm-hmm. taste that I get out of here. Mm-hmm. And there's something else in there that I'm not quite placing, but I really kind of enjoy what it does with the aftertaste. It really kind of just leaves you with a, mm, and then there's that mineral watery kind of thing going yes. on, you know, like yes. that. I don't know. I, I, I'm very, enjoying this. this it's very it. impressive, and uh, and we'll have some more. We will also be uh, having some thirsty minor, and it's not minor as in underage, but minor as in someone who uh, <laughs> I didn't <laughs> even think about that. That would be a bad thing to name your beer. I'm just I'm just going <laughs> right. to go ahead and say it. Uh, we'll also be having some thirsty minor. It is from uh, Rhinelander Brewing Company. It's a chocolate stout, so we'll go to that in our final uh, segment, and we'll be sharing with you the popular mechanics list. 
of great lighter craft beers uh, for your uh, summer. This is very good. And which wrench not to buy. That's right. And we'll be right back here listening to Smokin' and Toastin'. <laughs> you done good. I'm going to let you bring your whiskey every week. <laughs> got to let you start bringing some of your big beers you can get in your, uh, uh, in your ship. Oh, man, my... Uh... On the beach in Hawaii. Welcome back. It's Smoking and Toasting, and uh, we are all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand-rolled cigars. Welcome all about to show it. number 143, where we're talking about the best light craft beers, and we also did uh, great uh, whiskey gifts for Father's Day. And we're brought to you by B&B Butchers and Restaurant at 1814 Washington Ave in Houston and in the shops at Clear Fork in uh, Fort Worth. So, uh, Ian, we... <laughs> I, I just... I wanted to point out that I'm just still really like getting new flavors from that whiskey. So I started thinking I had to run off to the restroom a minute ago, and that's where I do most of my best thinking anyway. But um, uh, I, I was thinking there's that flavor in there that I'm not uh, that's kind of there. We, you know, the one thing we didn't talk about is the malt profile on there's this definitely yeah, So I think it's definitely. the way that that. That raw sugar and malt are kind of mm-hmm. interacting with each other, create right. a really nice kind of nice kind of sweetness to the, it. This whiskey is very well balanced between the flavors, mm-hmm. and it and it's complex enough that I was saying it'd be fun. It'd be a fun thing to sit down and just sip this like across an evening and let the flavors sort of reveal themselves to you. And that's that's the complexity kind of speaking there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like like this is this is something you can do. It. It's not straightforward. It's it's very much going to unfold itself to you, I think, as you as yeah. you drink. So, and it was interesting too because the, like the first sip was good, mm-hmm. and then the next few sips were better. Mm-hmm. Like it just it was good, and then it got better. And you yes. got to love that. You yes, because we've all had we've all had either food or drink or something like that where the first bite is really good, and then it kind of eh, after after too many. Well, I'm kind of reminded of too that. Rich about it Do or, you remember the whiskey that you brought uh, a few shows back? That was uh, uh, it, w- it was whiskey and beer, like something had something to do with the beer. hopped whiskey. The hopped whiskey. Never That's heard of what it. it was. Yeah, uh, it was that way. Like the first drink, I'm like, all right, this is all right. Man. And then the more I drank it, the less I liked it. That that just reeked, by the way. Like oh, it's, yeah. And you know, I, I will tell you, it doesn't taste as bad as it smells. Like that oh, stuff it was smells so terrible. So Maybe that's why I liked the first sip a little better, is because the smell was so bad. Then when I took the sip, I was like, "Oh, good! It's, it doesn't so taste I, as bad." as I it gave smells. that to uh, Keegan, one of the guys here now. Yes, and he um, the same one who uh, loaned us right, the black. The black yes. right? So mm-hmm. he has some taste in whiskey, and uh, and he's so funny because he's like he opened it up. He's like, "Oh, hell no!" <laughs> <laughs> he didn't try it. And then apparently, at some point in time later, he tried it. And he goes, "You know, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be." Yeah. <laughs> But you know, when you say something's not bad, you're not saying it's good. Yeah. So I just like to point out that that when you bring stuff, like you have not earned back my trust. There was that, and then before that, there was the Malort. So damn it, were, I bring interesting stuff. You are still not to be trusted. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you're not to be trusted. I'm on the do not trust no, list. No, no, it it is it is interesting. <laughs> so the uh, the best light beers, according to an article in Popular Mechanics, and I will. Uh, uh, I will just read you before we start the list. I want to read you the other articles from Popular Mechanics that I, that are the, clickable that are across the top. Yeah, right, across right. the top. There's uh, there is upgrade your home theater with Samsung's TV sale. So that's probably that a seems popular one. mechanics yeah, like. Yeah, uh, this tiny island is the epicenter of green tech. Okay, that seems so popular mechanics like. Yeah, yeah. There's Bu- got to be an airplane yeah. in there somewhere. Buying a knockoff predator drone is a bad idea. Okay, so I get that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, do we really need an R-rated Star Trek movie? Uh, that doesn't seem real. Well, but, there's but there's, there's got to be a car or yeah, an airplane yeah. in there too. But well, I guess drone takes airplanes. Yeah. Somewhere. Well, I think this is what you're looking for. The final one is Evan Rude's new E Tech 150 is a two-stroke marvel. It's a boat engine. Love it. <laughs> it's a boat engine. So love. That's it. popular mechanics. But the article itself is. The Although I think if you're really country, like like a lot of Texas yeah. guys, got to be a Murphy. Uh, really? I see. My dad had an Evan Rude when yeah. I was a boy. That was that was what we had. 
Evan Reed's are the bomb. All I know is it was loud and fun. I don't have a boat. I have no idea, really. Yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> uh, it always reminds me of the only the only thing I really know about boats, other than I love being on them, uh, is uh, that old saying: the two best days in the boat owner's life is the day he buys the boat and the day he sells the boat. Uh, the eleven best light beers is the article that <laughs> it's on popularmechanics.com. I'm not making this up. You can go and look and find it. The craft beer revolution has finally come to light beer, and we love the results. Here are our favorite IPAs, wheat beers, and lagers all clocking in at around 100 calories. First one on the list is Southern Tier Brewing Company's Swipe Light, which I suppose is a take on Swipe Right, uh, which uh, is the, yeah, the, the, the tender thing. Uh, the most refreshing... It says, the most refreshing pale ale we've ever tasted. Unlike an IPA, there's a balance between the toasty barley flavors and the bright citrus hops, and the flavor's big enough to deliver that post-workout reward and satisfaction. 110 calories, 4% ABV. Huh. Uh, I have actually seen this one. I have not tasted it. Six Point Jammer. Six Point I've is seen the it. ones that yeah. have the tall. They're 12-ounce cans, mm-hmm. but they're taller, taller and skinnier. Jammer was the most fun beer we tasted. What does fun beer taste like? Pleasantly surprising over a backbone of wheat was a bright, fruity, and sour character, but you weren't sure what you'd taste next. Uh, they t- they say try the 15 can jammer session pack, which also includes berry, citrus, ruby, and tropical variations. 125 calories and a 4.0 ABV. Mm. Hmm. <clears throat> that Excuse one looks familiar. Moment. What's that one? Now? Uh, that's session light. Now you've had you've had the session lager yeah, in the red so cans, right? Lager. Uh, they say, dang, this is refreshing. Uh, true to Full Sail Brewing's session line. Full Sail is the is a brewery, which provides craft beer takes on classic lagers and easy-drinking beers. Session Light indeed tastes like a light American beer, but improved. There's a clean barley malt flavor and none of the odd off flavors that punish you if you let your typical light beer warm up. Or if you let your typical light beer appear in your brewer glass. brew <laughs> something that they call a craft beer that's not really a craft that's beer. not really a craft beer. A We've funky tried taste that. in your mouth. We've tried that. Yes, uh, 100 calories and ABV of 3.6. Wow. Wow. Uh, then there's New Belgium's Mural. Now I love New Belgium, but I have never seen this beer before. It's produced in collabor- collaboration with Mexican craft brewer Primus Cerveceria. Uh, Cerveceria. Uh, it's an alcoholic take on the sweetened fruit drinks known as agua fresca. Mural uses a blend of agave, hibiscus, lime, and watermelon. On a hot day, they say, serve it over ice. So I'm not even really sure That's it's a beer. But interesting, it interesting to say yeah. serve it over ice. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it sounds very interesting. Then there's 26.2 brew. Uh, and it's got a big 26.2 on the can. It's hard not to be flattered when a brewery designs a beer for your favorite pastime, but 26.2 is great on its own merit. This a- anybody wondering what the 26.2 is, that's a, that's the length of a marathon. Of a marathon, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. And so clearly they're aiming at you know, kind of the same people that Michelob Ultra likes to market to. Like, if you're athletic, right. drink this beer. Um, this is a marathon beer. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it says it's great on its own merit. It's thirst-quenching thirst wheat ale. Gets flavor fortification via Himalayan sea salt and coriander for a smooth brew and a crisp finish. And then there's one that made the other list, Harpoon's Rec League. The hazy pale ale has the soft bitterness and juicy hops of the opaque New England IPAs that are twice its strength and at least twice the calories. We're going to have to try that. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to try this. The hops tend towards tropical flavors and the finish lightly sweet, 120 calories, ABV of Uh, 3.8. We are also going to have to try this one, Firestone Walker's Easy Jack. Mm, I uh, think I've had that before, actually. It isn't new. They say it's a longtime favorite session IPA. But recently, Firestone Walker retooled the recipe to dial down the alcohol and calories. It still packs uh, oh. bright floral and fruit hops that we love. Now it's just a little healthier for us. 120 calories, ABV of 4.0. Speaking of Firestone Walker, I bought a 12-pack of their 805 the other day. Mm, what mm. a great beer. Great beer. You remember uh, when we were in California, that beer is everywhere yeah, in Los Angeles. Everywhere. Everywhere. Love it. Uh, Dogfish Heads, Slightly Mighty IPA. This was on the other list as well. They say, a funny thing happened every time we tried to take notes on Slightly Mighty IPA. The can was empty before we were ready for it to be gone. Uh, (laughs) So naturally, we opened another can of this hop-centric IPA with a touch of monk fruit, a natural sweetener, and tried it again and again. 95 calories, ABV, 
of 3.6. This was also on the other list, Boulevard's Easy Sport. This blonde ale tastes more like a wheat beer thanks to the salt and tangerine peel additions and low bitterness. A touch of hops with an orange-like aroma add to the fruity yet dry character. 99 calories, ABV of 4.1. I have not had Ballast Point Lager. But I haven't they, either. But they say that uh, this tastes like a simple American beer. But it's made with all the classic craft beer ingredients. All barley, no corn or rice, uh, and a grapefruit-tinged Apollo hops. There are subtle fruit notes, a touch of that grapefruit, and a boatload of refreshment. 99 calories and a 4.2 ABV for the lager. And finally, Avery's Pacer IPA. Had a lot of good beers from Avery, have not had the Pacer. Haven't had they it say it's got a mild orange and tangerine hop character. Pacer's on the lighter side of the hoppy brews we tried, but it's by no means watery thanks to a helping of wheat and oats that provide body. 100 calories and an ABV of 4.5. Yep, yep. Uh, so uh, what I like about that is that a lot of these are described as not being watery. Um, I was thinking about you know, people who are trying to uh, be health conscious, but they still want a beer. And so they're buying a Michelob Ultra. And it it just, it really it is, is watery. watery. It has no flavor, you know? <clears throat> it is a beer, but only barely. You know, <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And, and so if you can go this direction, you can find something that really does have great flavor, but is lower in calories. Well, that's the funny thing about Michelob Ultra, too, is it, it's not even like an offensive beer. It's just there's it there's just not much there. It's kind of like beer tofu or something. Uh-huh. It's right, a, right. There's just not enough of anything really there to yeah. You know, Coors Light is much that way. Like it's you know if it's really hot outside and the Coors Light is really cold, you can enjoy the experience, but it doesn't really feel like a beer experience. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? That's right. It doesn't feel like you're really getting those flavors that you want when you have a beer. And so that's you know what the, I love uh, they this. sell a lot of it. So I, I'm convinced that a lot of people like watery beer. Yeah, I'm convinced that you're right. Um, and I, I don't know if maybe that's just if people are stuck in a uh, this is what I always drink, so that's what I'm going to drink. Mm-hmm. I'm amazed. I'm amazed that a lot of beer drinkers in general, like this is just a funny thing, a lot of beer drinkers in general, uh, your mass populist beer drinkers, will buy that one. They're that brand. They're brand loyal. They mm-hmm. buy that one beer. That's all they drink. That's all they drink right. ever. Can you imagine having dinner that way? Yeah. No. Yeah, right. I'll have I the, get uh, this one pizza from yeah. Papa John's, and it's always the same pizza, no and matter I what. I get that every night. And, and it's every night, pizza I eat. and I have leftovers for breakfast. You know, like uh, that doesn't make sense. Like my palate doesn't work that way. When I go shop for beer, um, I may buy, for instance, a 12 pack of like that 805. Mm-hmm. I know that that's one I'll toss in the fridge. I can have that mowing the lawn. I can do yep. that. That's kind of on the lighter side for yep. me. Yep. Yep. Um, and it's a great beer. I know I'll get through it eventually, but most of the time I buy. Uh, multiple six packs of different things because I'm right. going to be in, a, in a, like I my love- typical shopping cart. I would come out with something light like an 805. I'd come out with uh, Founders Dirty Bastard mm-hmm. in my shopping cart, and I would probably have something eh, off the chart in there, you know, right? Like something really something ridiculous like a yeah. dogfish head or uh, something like that, well. and then. Uh, and that's just that's kind of how I shop for beer. If it looks interesting, it's fun. I don't want a whole cart of the same thing. Well, one of my favorite things is, and you can do this at H E B and Kroger and at my specs that I go to, is where you can go to where they have the singles and yes. you can mix a uh, mix and match a six pack. And what I do with that is I'll I'll buy beers that I think oh this might be interesting to drink on the show, and right. then I take them home and they never seem to actually make it <laughs> and all then the you way drink to the them. show because I drink and then them. you think to yourself that would have been interesting that to have on the really show. Really interesting to have on the show. So speaking of interesting, this stout that we're going to try here uh, is one that I, I have not had this before, but uh, Alan Denny, who nobody cares about, uh, he and his wife came over uh, to the house for dinner recently, and he brought some uh, very interesting beers with him, but then he got very interested in the beers that I had, uh, and so that's what we wound up drinking. And as a result, there were a couple of cans of this ch- of this. Uh, of this stout left this uh, thirsty mind. Well, so I, minor, I, I, yes. I I didn't realize until I saw the can until you pulled out the can. So you, you think you beer. might have had? This I actually before. now that I'm looking at it, I know I've had this before. They had this at my H E B and they had it on sale. It was it was cheap. It was five dollars ish for a six pack. And my right. wife bought it and said, "Hey, even if it's not good, it's probably drinkable, right? right. And at that price, right? And so yeah, and so I tried it and I thought that's a pretty decent beer, especially especially at that price point." Um, 
So not to let that cat out of the bag, but um, it's pretty decent beer, especially at that price point. Yeah. Well, uh, you don't think of a lot of stouts being on the inexpensive side. Well, that's because stouts are more expensive to make. They mm-hmm. take more uh, more um, raw materials to make. Right. You know, if you're going to make a stout, you're going to use a lot more malt. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's it. Like, there's, there's right. no other way to do right. it. There's no way to make it without using yeah. that much malt. And obviously, malt is not one of the cheaper ingredients when you're putting a beer together. Right. So, malt and hops, probably the most expensive ingredients in the beer. Let's, oh, I wonder if those ingredients are on the ingredients label in Bud Light. Water, malt, barley, hops. Yeah, I guess they are. But they don't use the yeast. They don't use yeast. Or, or, Wait, or how rice. Can, how, how, can they make, how can they make a beer without yeast? Uh, it's pretty weird, isn't it? But it's not on the ingredient label. Because even even if you get a um, uh, um, uh, some sort of creek, which is a wild yeast mm-hmm, kind of thing, mm-hmm. you know, you just let nature yeast it. You still call it wild yeast, but apparently they don't put yeast in those at all. This is actually quite good. It's not. I'm not going to like put it up there with some of the, you know, really intense stouts that we've had. Let's let's talk that about are, that are much more complex. Well, let's talk but about this is good and easy. Bad news and then good news. Okay? okay, so bad news is its mouth feels a little thin. Mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. Um, and the flavor. Well, by profile, the way, so is Guinness. You'd call Guinness thin. I think this has about the same mouthfeel as a Guinness, yes. Oh, no, no. Guinness has much fuller mouthfeel and and silkier bubbles. Well, one of the things that always surprised me about Guinness was that it didn't have a bigger mouthfeel. It's not. People go to it expecting it to be really, really big, and it's not as big as you might think. It's not as big as you think. But this, for a stout, I think this has a thin Mm mouthfeel. Also, the bubbles in it are, uh, there's not a lot of bubbles in it, not a lot of carbonation in it, which is is okay by me, but some people like a little more carbonation. So this comes off a little bit flat, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, both of those things being said, that might be what some people consider on the downside. The upside is it tastes pretty good. It's got a good chocolate and coffee flavor too. Uh, it's got definite chocolate, and you can tell that that cocoa powder. It's it's got that classic kind of. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I put a little too much in there, so I could have the little dry chunks that uh-huh, I can break up. You know, uh-huh, it yeah. has that kind of feel to it. You know, like if you when know, you make your own you, malts. Yes, if you <laughs> if you've ever done that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. By the way, um, uh, and if you don't, you're way too young. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, so there's a lot to it. But I, if I remember correctly, like when my when my wife brought it home, it was like five bucks yeah. for a six pack. That's what I think Alan said. And it's me not bad. Four ninety nine for a six. Right. Pack. So yeah. I'd say that this is a good drinkable beer. It's also mm-hmm. for a stout. Um, and stouts, people people think a lot of times stouts have to be high ABV. They don't really. Right. Guinness is right at around the five percent mark. Right. This is five point five. This is five point five. So actually, our highest ABV beer today was the sour. That's right. Yeah, That's which right. was and and it wasn't that. Uh, was it six yeah, and a half? Five point <coughs> seven. Five point seven. This is five point five, and we had the five. Actually, my 10. show beer, I think, was your show beer was the biggest beer was, of, the, of, the, of the day. <laughs> the one I was drinking that wasn't part of the show, I think, was one of the biggest. So, anyway. but this is perfect actually because this is a uh, you know kind of the theme of the show today is so, then the lighter uh, beers. For here's summer. kind of a fun thing about a beer like this. Not mm-hmm. only is it reasonably drinkable, okay, it probably is going to appeal to people who uh, don't normally drink stouts because it's right. got that so it's sweetness. A good, it's a good early stout. If it's you're got a sweetness the... like Nestle Quick has sweetness. It's, it's got that kind of right, right, right. I, I'm going to use this term, and it's going to be a little funny. It's got a little trashy yumminess to it. I know what you're talking about. You know and what I mean? And I, like, and I like that trashy yumminess. Right, right. It's got a little trashy yumminess to it. And you know what? You know what? Let me let me see if I can nail this for you. You ever eat cocoa puffs or uh, cocoa krispies or yes. uh, flint whatever that Flintstone yes. cocoa uh, rice krispies? Yes. Okay, so you know the flavor that the milk has yes. once you've. Uh, Trashy that's yumminess. trashy yumminess, <laughs> and that's exactly what this reminds me of. That's exactly so. What it yeah. So it, and and so all these things are pretty good. I'm going to tell you this at the price point on this beer, and and uh, 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 good job, Alan. I'm bringing this one at the price point on this beer. This is a fun beer. I would tell you if you have ice cream, pour some of this over oh, it. Pour how it fun in the bowl. Would that be? Yeah, you would enjoy yeah. it because this is the kind of thing that would add to the ice cream. If you have Cocoa Krispies, try it in some of this. It's not just for breakfast anymore. That's right. It does say right here on the can, stout brewed with cocoa powder. 
That's right. So with the powder, they're so not like hiding the cocoa not powder at all. At not all. all. Yeah, yeah. And I think that they make a pretty good product, especially at that price point. Yeah. So I'm I'm raving about it because while it's not an amazing beer at its price point, it's pretty darn good, and it's kind of fun if you want something different. And it's not high ABV, so no. you're talking about something you can enjoy even in the summer. If you're thinking, yeah, it's summer, I can't really drink my stouts and porters and and barley wines and heavier beers because it's just too heavy for this time of year. I don't understand that thought I know, I know this doesn't uh, compute for you, and that's okay. But some people will understand what I'm saying, and this is a wonderful uh, way to kind of stay in the flavor profile without going, uh, without going uh, a bit heavier. So, um, so yeah, yeah, I have to nice. say that I'm for this beer for that one fact, mm-hmm. and it's, it's good enough, especially at that price point. This is... This is pretty good at that price. If this was a ten dollars six pack, um, I've had stouts that are in that price range that that beat it out at five dollars. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I've ever had a stout in that at, price at, range. In that price range, that, that's that even remotely better. as good as this. Yeah, no, I I, <laughs> so. I would agree with you. So it gets back to kind of a constant theme of the show, which is price versus quality. Price versus quality, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. There there are times when you want to spend more. I think, by the way, that sour. I think it was like a, I think it was like a twenty five dollar beer. Yeah. Like it was not an inexpensive uh, bomber to buy, but but boy, it's you don't. Good. All, but yes, it, it absolutely is, and I think it was worth it. But you don't always want to spend that on a beer, right? You know, sometimes you want to be able to do something that's in a different price range, but still have it be really well. Enjoyable. And it, what's funny about that too is uh, if this is, let's say, this is twenty five, uh, whatever it actually is. Let's, let's say it's twenty five. This beer caused enough conversation between us. Mm-hmm. To where that was easily worth it. Absolutely. Absolutely worth Absolutely. it. And this is not necessarily the kind of beer that you sit down and just drink the whole bottle yourself. That's right. It's a bigger bottle. It, you split bottle this with share. a friend and you which talk is, about which it. Which is why you don't want to see that in a six pack. You want to see it in the in the bomb. Yeah, just some like beers that. some beers are just like that and mm-hmm. they just lend themselves to it. That's absolutely right. Well, I think all three of the beers and the whiskey on today's yeah, today show was a have, been, have been really good. So I uh I'm, you know, uh, generally we have a tendency to get really caught up in, you know, complex um, descriptions and and price to quality and all of the all of the things that we try to talk about with these uh, various drinks and cigars and stuff. But in the end, it really boils down to something that I learned from you, and that is beer good, beer good. You're good. And with that, I think we will leave you, my friends. Thank you for being a part of this 143rd edition of Smoking and Toastin'. We are uh, uh, thrilled to be, you know, invited back by you. We we appreciate it. Thanks. And for, thank you for playing beer with us. And thank you very much. Beer good, my friend. Beer good. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> oh, wait, I forgot you were going to sing. Next time. <laughs>